This article is about the phonology of the Scottish Gaelic language. There is no standard variety of Scottish Gaelic, although statements below are about all or most dialects. The northwestern dialects, Outer Hebrides, Sky and the Northwest Highlands are discussed more than others as they represent the majority of speakers. Gaelic phonology is characterized by a phoneme inventory particularly rich in sonorant coronal phonemes, commonly 9 in total. A contrasting set of palatalized and non-palatalized consonants. Strong initial word stress and vowel reduction in unstressed syllables. The presence of preaspiration of stops in certain contexts. Falling intonation in most types of sentences, including questions. Lenition and extreme sandy phenomena due to the geographic concentration of Gaelic speakers along the western seaboard with its numerous islands. Gaelic dialectologists tend to ascribe each island its own dialect. On the mainland, no clear dialect boundaries have been established to date but the main areas are generally assumed to be Argyllshire, Perthshire, Moidart, Ardnamurchan, Wester Ross and Sutherland. History of the discipline Descriptions of the language have largely focused on the phonology. Welsh naturalist Edward Lhuyd published the earliest major work on Scottish Gaelic after collecting data in the Scottish Highlands between 1699 and 1700, in particular data on Argyle Gaelic and the now obsolete dialects of northeast Inverness Shire. Following a significant gap, the middle to the end of the 20th century saw a great flurry of dialect studies, in particular by Scandinavian scholars, again focusing largely on phonology. 1938 Nils Holmer Studies on Argyllshire Gaelic published by the University of Uppsala 1937 Karl Borgström The Dialect of Bara published by the Norsk Tidskrift for Sprogvidenskap 1940 Karl Borgström The Dialects of the Outer Hebrides published by the Norsk Tidskrift for Sprogvidenskap 1941 Karl Borgström The Dialects of Sky and Ross Shire published by the Norwegian University Press 1956 Magna Oftedal The Gaelic of Lerbost, Isle of Lewis published by the Norsk Tidskrift for Sprogvidenskap 1957 Nils Holmer The Gaelic of Kintyre published by the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies 1962 Nils Holmer The Gaelic of Aran published by the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies 1966 Gordon MacGilfhinian Gaelic Uibista D's South Uist Gaelic Published by the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies 1973 Elmar turns the phonemic analysis of Scottish Gaelic focusing on Applecross Gaelic published by the Helmut Busk Verlag 1978 Nancy Dorian East Sutherland Gaelic published by the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies 1989 Mertan o Merchu East Perthshire Gaelic published by the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies and the period between 1950 and 1963, fieldwork was carried out to document all then remaining Gaelic dialects, culminating in the publication of the five-volume survey of the Gaelic dialects of Scotland by the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies in 1997. The survey collected data from informants as far south as Arran, Coal, Brig o' Turk, east to Blairgory, Bramer and Grantown on Spey, northeast to Dunbeath and Portscara and all areas west of these areas, including St Kilda. <laughs> Vowels The following is a chart of the monophthong vowel phonemes appearing in Scottish Gaelic. All vowel phonemes except for and can be both long represented with and short. Note that phonologically, a behaves both as a front or back vowel depending on the geographical area and vowel length. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Diphthongs. The diphthongs of Scottish Gaelic are a, i, i, u, e, i, u, epsilon u, u, o, e, a. Topic. Orthography Vowels are written as follows The English equivalents given are approximate, and refer most closely to the Scottish pronunciation of Standard English. The vowel a in English father is back in Southern English. The a in English late in Scottish English is the pure vowel e rather than the more general diphthong e. 
The same is true for the O in English boat, O in Scottish English, instead of the diphthong. Topic: <laughs> Digraphs and trigraphs. The language uses many vowel combinations, which can be categorized into two types, depending on the status of one or more of the written vowels in the combinations. Category 1, vowel plus glide vowels. In this category, vowels in digraphs, trigraphs that are next to a neighboring consonant are for all intents and purposes part of the consonant, showing the broad or slender status of the consonant. Category 2, diphthongs and triphthongs. In this category, vowels are written together to represent either a diphthong, or what was in Middle Irish a diphthong. Category 2 digraphs can be followed by Category 1 glides, and thereby form trigraphs. Consonants Like the closely related languages, modern Irish and Manx, Scottish Gaelic contains what are traditionally referred to as broad and slender consonants. Historically, primitive Irish consonants preceding the front vowels, e, and i, developed a j like coarticulation similar to the palatalized consonants found in Russian while the consonants preceding the non-front vowels, a, o, and u, developed a velar coarticulation. While Irish distinguishes broad, i.e. phonetically velar or velarized consonants and slender i.e. phonetically palatal or palatalized consonants, in Scottish Gaelic velarization is only present for n, l, r. This means that consonants marked broad by the orthography are, for the most part simply unmarked, while slender consonants are palatal or palatalized. The main exception to this are the labials, ppmfv, which have lost their palatalized forms. The only trace of their original palatalization is a glide found before or after back vowels, e.g. bool, peel, mouth versus bo, pj, alive. Celtic linguists traditionally transcribe slender consonants with an apostrophe or more accurately, a prime following the consonant egm and leave broad consonants unmarked. The unaspirated stops in some dialects east and south are voiced see below, as in Manx and Irish, while in all other areas full voicing is allophonic with regional variation. Voicing occurs in certain environments, such as within breath groups and following homorganic nasals see below. The variation suggests that the unaspirated stops at the underlying phonological level are voiced, with devoicing an allophonic variant that in some dialects has become the most common realization. Irish dialects and Manx also have devoiced unaspirated consonants in certain environments. In the modern languages, there is sometimes a stronger contrast from Old Gaelic in the assumed meaning of broad and slender. In the modern languages, the phonetic difference between broad and slender consonants can be more complex than mere velarization, palatalization. For instance, the Gaelic slender s is so palatalized that it has become postalveolar. Certain consonants in particular the fricatives H, X, C, v, and the lenus coronals L, N, are rare in initial position except as a result of lenition. Phonetic <inaudible> <inaudible> variation <inaudible> 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 Gaelic phonemes may have various allophones as well as dialectal or variations in pronunciation not shown in the chart above. The more common ones are t as t or t. T may also be affricated, area 1 without affrication t. Area 2 with strong affrication t. Area 3 with weak affrication t. As in hybrid and dialects as n. Topic. Velarized L Velarized L has six main realizations as shown on the map. Area 1, by far the most populous, has L. The area includes most of the Outer Hebrides, the highlands, and areas south of central western areas such as Kintyre, Arran, Argyll, and East Perthshire. Area 2, Ardnamurchan, Moidart, Lochaber, South Lorne, and Upper Badenoch has L, W, or WL. Area 3, between Mull and Lismore has vocalized it, U Area 4, in the south of Mull and Easdale, has or ed Area 5, Isla, has T, or T, L 
Area 6, St Kilda, had w or the Survey of Scottish Gaelic Dialects occasionally reports labialist forms such as l, w or l, v outside the area they predominantly appear in, for example in Harris and Wester Ross. Aspiration The fortis stops, p, t, t, k, k, are voiceless and aspirated. This aspiration occurs as postaspiration in initial position and, in most dialects, as preaspiration in medial position after stressed vowels. Similar to the manifestation of aspiration, the slender consonants have a palatal offglide when initial and a palatal onglide when medial or final. Preaspiration Preaspiration varies in strength and can manifest as glottal or h or can vary depending on the place of articulation of the preaspirated consonant, being c before slender segments and x before broad ones. The occurrence of preaspiration follows a hierarchy of C greater than T greater than P, i.e. if a dialect has preaspiration with P, it will also have it in the other places of articulation. Preaspiration manifests itself as follows. Area 1 is XKXTXP and seek court CP. Area 2 is XKXTHP and seek court HP. Area 3 is XKHTHP and seek HTHP. Area 4 is KTP. Area 5 is XK and seek no preaspiration of T and P. Area 6 no preaspiration lack of preaspiration coincides with full voicing of the unaspirated stops. Area 6 dialects in effect largely retain the Middle Irish stops as has Manx and Irish. Topic: <laughs> Nasalization. In some Gaelic dialects, particularly the Northwest, stops at the beginning of a stressed syllable become voiced when they follow nasal consonants of the definite article. For example, Thai a house is t j, but in Thai the house is n d j c f. Also tambaka tobacco t om ba k. In such dialects, the leanest stops p t t k k tend to be completely nasalized. Thus, doras a door is t rs, but in doras the door is n rs. This is similar to eclipsis in classical Gaelic and Irish, but not identical as it only occurs when a nasal is phonetically present whereas eclipsis in classical Gaelic and Irish may occur in positions following a historic but no longer present nasal. The voicing of voiceless aspirated stops and the nasalization of the unaspirated voiced stops occurs after the preposition an am in an am there, the interrogative particle and in a few other such particles and occasionally, after any word ending in a nasal e.g. a bile to a fagin cuss as us rather than k us. In southern Hebrida and dialects, the nasal optionally drops out entirely before a consonant, including plosives. Lenition and spelling The lenited consonants have special pronunciations. Carat lenition of initial lnr is not shown in writing. Word initially, these are always assumed to have the strong values, l, n, r, unless they are in a leniting environment or unless they belong to a small and clearly defined group of particle mostly the forms of the prepositions re and la. Elsewhere, any of the realizations of l and r may occur, l, is lenitable only in Harris Gaelic which retains the fourth l sound, l, the, s, is not lenited when it appears before per meter p, t, k. Lenition may be blocked when homorganic consonants i.e. those made at the same place of articulation clash with grammatical lenition rules. Some of these rules are active particularly with dentals, others have become fossilized i.e. velars and labials. For example, blocked lenition in the surname Campbell, Campbell versus Camshron Cameron is an incident of fossilized blocked lenition, blocked lenition in air and Thai salich, on the dirty house. Versus era block mhath on the good boy is an example of the productive lenition blocking rule. Topic: <laughs> Stress. Stress is usually on the first syllable. For example, drawshade a bridge t Topic: <laughs> Apenthesis. 
A distinctive characteristic of Gaelic pronunciation also present in Scots and Scottish English dialects cf, girl L and film FLM is the insertion of epithetic vowels between certain adjacent consonants. This affects orthographic LNR when followed by orthographic BBHCHGGHMMH, and orthographic M followed by LRSCH. Tarb bull, t, av, Alba Scotland, al, ap. Occasionally, there are irregular occurrences of the epithetic vowel, for example in Glasgow per kilo liter, as, shoe, Glasgow. There are often wide variations in vowel quality in epithetic vowels, as illustrated by a map showing the pronunciations of dear bh. Area 1 t av, Area 2 t -a -v, with the v appearing in the northwestern region but not the southeastern Area 3 t -v, Area 4 t with vocalization of the v Area 5 t -v, with reduction of the epithetic vowel as in Irish Topic: Elision. Schwa at the end of a word is dropped when followed by a word beginning with a vowel. For example, doing a man, t, and doing a gad your man, and t act. Topic: Tones. Of all the Celtic languages, lexical tones only exist in the dialects of Lewis and Sutherland in the extreme north of the Gaelic-speaking area. Phonetically and historically, these resemble the tones of Norway, Sweden and western Denmark. These languages have tonal contours typical for monosyllabic words and those for disyllabic words. In Lewis Gaelic, it is difficult to find minimal pairs. Among the rare examples are bodh a po Underwater rock versus bow, po, cow, and fifth each, phi, x, raven versus fiac, fix, debt. Another example is the tonal difference between a i n m, n m, and a nam, a nam, the latter of which has the tonal contour appropriate to a disyllable. These tonal differences are not to be found in Ireland or elsewhere in the Scottish Gaedhelthisht. Furthermore, they are disappearing entirely among younger speakers, even in Lewis. Morphophonology Morphophonological variation The regular verbal noun particle, written, has several pronunciations. Area 1. As expected from the spelling Area 2. K Area 3. V Area 4. No suffix Area 5. Area 6 is characterized by a high level of variation both between words and adjacent informants. For some words it is possible to resolve the indeterminate area, for example with the verb scrioba, scraping. Area 1. As expected from the spelling. Area 2, k. Area 3, v. Area 4, no suffix. Area 5. Area 6. Notes <laughs>